I'm going to spend the next 100 days in a world we waited a lifetime for, Pearl World. Join me as I embark on an epic journey, forging bonds with many animal-like creatures called Pearls, uncovering the mysteries of Palpagos Island and taking on its ultimate challenge, the Syndicates of Pearl World. Do something, 5K, come on! Do something! Come on, four seconds! I strangely woke up to three welcoming faces in the middle of nowhere. Nearby, a PDA caught my attention, revealing information about towers being key and trees bearing truth. Setting out to find my bearings and to tackle the tasks ahead, I paid little attention to the unusual circumstances. I grabbed a few scraps from the floor before stumbling upon an intriguing artifact that had something to do with fast travels. Not sure what it meant at the time, but hey, it seemed beneficial. That's when I came across another traveler on my path to discovery. She seemed quite alarmed at my presence and offered some assistance in the form of wooden planks. Not knowing what this world had in store for me, I decided not to take a chance to venture out too far. Instead, I found a great location to start up a base. Then, I was able to get a few things together to craft a primitive workbench, allowing me to cook up some basic tools and weapons to assist me on my journey. The PDA task required crafting power spheres. Gathering stones, I returned to the workbench to cook up the spheres. At the same time, a stone axe and a handheld torch were crafted. Armed with this gear, I felt a bit more confident in exploring more of the land I was thrown into. Here, unsuspecting creatures became targets for capture. I gave one of them a few whacks with a wooden club, lowering its health until it was low enough. Then, to sweeten the deal, I threw in a pal sphere at it. And to my surprise, the lamp pal was magically transported into a tiny holding space. Yeah, no questions asked, but it sure looks like the darnest thing. I've ever seen. Later that day, a task required setting up a PAL box. I then set up a storage box to keep my belongings, and well, it's a good thing I caught that lamp bell. It helped me work on the storage that was needed, which in turn helped me level up my base to level 2. Seeing as the lamp bell was the only PAL around, I felt it was my duty to find a PAL of its own. So, we crafted a sphere, and I went ahead to whack another lamp ball to lower its HP and threw in my sphere. And just like that, I had another lamp bell and a mate for my pal. After farming resources with the newly tamed pals, the day concluded with crafting a bed and getting some much needed rest. Day 2 began with me crafting two straw beds for my lamp bells and gathering wood to make a bunch of pal spheres. While waiting for the spheres to be crafted, I decided to check out a few other items, such as the repair bench, adding in a few more foundations to accommodate it, along with an old bow and a shield. Just before I could go off to some pals, I spotted a strange green statue. Of course, I had no idea what it was used for, but it seemed rather shiny and important. I guess, with all those distractions behind me, it was time to tackle the next task, catching those lamb bells. Fortunately, there were tons of these types of pals in the area. All I had to do was smack them a few times with a club and let loose my pal spheres, gaining five of them in no time at all. The thing is though, there were tons of other low-level pals in the area, and I had just crafted a whole bunch of pal spheres. So I guess you guys know what I was about to do, huh? Oh yeah! I went along, smacking some of the lower-level cativas and chickpeas and caught them with my spheres. Back at the base, I gathered most of the resources to craft the extra straw bed required and a feed box to keep my pals happy, while allowing me to level up my base to level 4. The next day brought a sense of camaraderie, as both my pals and I worked hand in hand to get things going at the base. Next on the list was to establish a berry plantation. Chopping down some trees for wood helped crafting the berry plot and once again leveled up my base. But I wasn't done just yet, we still had tons of energy left. So it was after cracking with the next couple of things to do, and that was to set up a statue of power. Then we worked on getting a PAL gear workbench, which of course needed some wood to complete the build. That eventually took our base to level 6. However, to complete the next set of base requirements, I had to unlock new technology. And that was a problem, as I was one level shy of doing so. There was only one way to get it done. And yes, peeps, that meant I had to go out to catch more pals. Lots more pals, more lamb pals, more chickpeas, and everything else I came into contact with. 
On day 4, the stone crusher was built, followed by the logging site and then the stone pit, allowing me to upgrade my base to level 7. Anyways, I needed to step away from the base for a bit to see what other interesting pals were out and about. Not too far from base, a few new pals were spotted, penglets and some fox parks, which I totally had to get. They looked simply amazing. I also came across my first alpha pal. Yeah, let's just say I wasn't going to be messing around with it anytime soon, no matter how tempting it was. I had a feeling it would have easily crushed me into smithereens. I did the smart thing and moved along to unlock the next fast travel statue. From there, an islander was spotted in the distance. He too showered me with some gifts, Paldeum fragments to be more specific, and I was able to find another one of those green effigies. The rest of the day was basically spent exploring more of the island, catching more pals on my way back to the base, and grabbing more of those green effigies close by. Oh yeah, and some eggs as well. The next day, I finally acquired my first piece of armor. No more running around in underpants for the camster. There was also something interesting on my technology page. A harness for the fox parks. Of course, I wanted to check it out, but a few pieces were required. So, off I went in search of leather and flame organs. A little further away from base, I spotted a couple of fox parks. I let loose the fox I had caught previously to take on the wild ones, and after taking them down, we were awarded exactly what was required. Leather and flame organs. However, just for good luck, we took down a few more foxes, and I even managed to tame some of the newer pals in the area. A mini elephant-like creature called Tiefens, and a tiny fluffy one called Kremis. I tried to go after another new pal, but these guys gave me one heck of a workout. They wouldn't stay still or fight back, they kept running, and I just gave chase. Finally, it was cornered, and then, well, it escaped from me yet again. At least I didn't come out empty-handed. I found another green effigy and a skill fruit tree. The thing is though, Cam's doesn't quit so easily. Another one of those pals was in the area, and together with my fox pox, we gave chase and cornered the bugger, making sure to deal the correct amount of damage to it, and then bagging my very own left monk or leaf monk, or whatever you call it. It turns out that the fox pox harness I was going after well, that actually turned my fox into a living, breathing flamethrower. I mean, how freaking insane was that? Definitely not what I was expecting. However, that was not the only thing I was interested in checking out. Previously on my way back to base, I saw a little birdie flying over me. And it got me thinking, surely this is something I could use as a mount. I returned to the spot where it was last seen, and sure enough, the Nightwing was there. I set out Fox Box and together we tag teamed the Nightwing, lowering its HP. Then I threw in my pal Sphere and would you believe it? I freaking caught the bugger. Although, I wasn't able to find its saddle in the technology page. It seems that I would have to level up a bit more. Back at base, I went ahead and prepped to build a few more structures needed to upgrade the level of my base. First on the list was to get the primitive furnace. In order to craft the next required item, I had to go out and farm a bunch of penguins for the power fluid they dropped. Of course, I had to take him out first. Not the greatest thing to do, but it was necessary. I needed quite a few of those pal fluids, and searching for these penglets took me a considerable distance away from the base, ending up at some seaside joints where I found myself attacking helpless little penguins for their bodily fluids. This was also a new area, bringing about a whole lot of new pals. Of course, I had to try my luck at capturing some of them, even if Nightwing wasn't that eager for them to join our team. Anyway, I did manage to get a Vixie and a Celery and found another green effigy. On day 8, creating a hot spring for my pals topped the list of things to do, followed by creating a second berry plantation which allowed me to upgrade my base to level 8. I then decided to work on building a proper base for myself, something a little cozier with a lot more walls. But first, a few resources were required, leading to the chopping down of the greenery around my base. After collecting the needed wood, I set out to build a cozy little base at the top of the hill, placing a couple of windows and walls to my liking. I attempted to finish things off with wooden started roofing, which gave me one hell of a fight to find a snap point that actually worked. Thankfully, after pulling out a bunch of hair from my head, 
I found a way to make it work and completed the construction of the little cozy cottage. Now that we had a base, I could get cracking on the other structures I needed to craft, starting with the high quality workbench. This helped me acquire my first improved tool, the metal pickaxe. From there I spent the rest of the day farming all the resources I needed, gathering a whole bunch of ores, crafting a metal axe in the process and collecting more ores that I could carry back to the base. Okie dokie! In the efforts to level up my pals for the upcoming boss battle, I came across two new creatures, Ichthy Deers. And knowing the camster, you know I had to try to tame these guys. However, these creatures were quite the challenge. Not only taking on one, but two was complete madness. I really bit off more than I could chew and almost paid the price for it, as these deers almost knocked me out. Fortunately, by some luck of the pal sphere guards, I managed to catch not only one of these deers, but actually bagged both of them. Pretty neat, huh? Anyways, done with that little side quest, it was time to focus on my group of pals and get them leveled by taking out some of the wild pals in the area. We also went about taking on a few more nightwings that happened to spawn nearby. Let's just say they weren't a match for the one I had. It pulverized one within a heartbeat and then helped me catch another. Yeah, we pretty much continued taking down more pals throughout the rest of the day. I needed one more structure to level up my base. Thankfully, all the items required for this were prepped up and ready to go, allowing me to build the medieval medicine bench. Then I went to work on a saddle for the deer that was previously caught, gaining my first ever mount. From there, I went ahead and leveled up my base to level 9 and built one of the next available requirements, the cooler box. Having done what I needed for the base, I decided to chill a little and check out my new mount. I also took it out for a test run taking the opportunity to level it up as well by smashing some of the wild pals that were in the area. Day 12, I continued leveling my character and pals, this time venturing further away from the base and facing new foes, syndicate thugs as they call themselves. There was also a neat little golden chest that showered me with a few awesome gifts. I then went about collecting some of the wild pals I hadn't seen before, like the electric type, spark it. Now those looked really cool. Then there was the grass type pal, Capriti, or something like that. It was pretty tough to ignore, so I just had to catch it. To top things off, I came across a lonely rush hole that I just had to add to my collection. It looked super awesome and seemed to have some sweet abilities. Yep, for the rest of the day, I focused on gaining a few extra levels in preparation for the boss fight. Alright, oh, right, right, right. right. I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing this. Oh, freak. Electric. Oh, we got ground. Alright. Time to take you... Well, not down, but... Ooh, shit, isn't it? Not a good idea. Oh, freak. There's 30,000. Yeah. I can't even see what level is it. We'll just uh, try and chill here. The break! There we go. That's something. Oof. We did some damage to this. Hey, yo, we should got a three, three arrow thingy. You know, we're doing quite an amount of damage. Uh, I need to need to change here. There you go. Come on, night ring. Oh, nice one. That was great stuff, buddy. I'm trying to hit freaking thing on the back here. Oh, two thousand. Two freaking thousand. Oh, there we go. Oh, six hundred. Come on. We can do this! Oh! There we go! There we freaking go! Oh my freaking self. <laughs> the next time we're gonna come in a bit more prepared, okay? So, for day 14, we went to take on our first dungeon. Oh boy, I had no idea about what was waiting for us on the other side. I mean, we did a crazy boss. Ooh. Ooh la la. Guess what? Ooh la la. I don't wanna, I don't wanna take it out. 
Looks amazing. Yeah. Never mind. All right, where is this darn bus? Right, it looks like we're going this way. Oh, uh, this looks interesting. Sleepless nights. Is this the bus? Come on. We got a level 10 here. I'm sure we can take it out. But hey, on the, on the boss itself. Come on, this one. Yes. There we go. Done. Done, son. You think that's it, hey? That was the bus. I think this is our way out. But first we need to grab these things. Ruby, dark skin, I mean dark skill fruits. Feathered hair band, schematic. However, I still had some time left for the day to end. And I thought, why not check out an alpha pal? Oh yeah, I was talking about the alpha chillet. Nightwing, I choose you. <laughs> Hey, yo! Ooh, we gotta be careful. Can we tame this thing? Let's see. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Yes, we can! First boss kill. It was back to taking care of the base for the next day. I went ahead and crafted a mill, which was one of the requirements for the next base upgrade. Then, I had to go out to gather some resources to craft a saddle for my Nightwing. Now that I had the levels for it, done with what I had to do for the base, I set out with my Nightwing in search of a Dinosaur. Apparently, they were supposed to drop wheat seeds, which was what I needed for my next task. I searched far and wide for a Dinosaur, and none were in sight. Just as I gave up and was on my way back to base, a freaking Dinosaur spawned. I wasted no time at all and attacked it with my Nightwing. Here's the thing, instead of taking it out, Cam's here decided to freaking catch the darn thing. I mean, in all honesty, who wouldn't? However, it didn't help the situation that I was in. Oh well, we'll try again another time. And so, the search for wheat seeds continued on day 16. This time, after spotting another Dinosaur, I proceeded to take it down. And guess what? There were no freaking wheat seeds. I was kind of perplexed at what had just happened. Anyways, I pressed on, looking for more of these pals. They were pretty much kill on sight kind of creatures. And again, I was met with the same outcome. No wheat seeds. However, during my search for the elusive wheat seeds, I happened to spot a freaking shiny Nightwing. Oh, you bet. I just had to try to catch this beauty. It was quite a battle. The shiny Nightwing was pretty powerful and did a lot of damage to both me and the Nightwing I had. It was a lengthy fight, one that I had to be careful of as I didn't want to take out the shiny pal. Unfortunately, when it came time to catch the darn thing, it did so much damage to me that I sort of panicked for a moment and well, destroyed the shiny Nightwing. Meh, was I disappointed. Oh well, at least I got a level up from that. I tried once again to find wheat seeds by taking out another Dinosaur, but it yielded the same old result. No seeds. I began to doubt that this was the right approach. So, I decided to return to the base to check on a few things. While doing so, we were suddenly attacked by a group of violent pals. I had no idea what was happening, and the thought of setting up any defense systems didn't even cross my mind. My base and everything in it were at the mercy of my pals. Fortunately, they rose to the occasion, fighting back with unwavering determination and ultimately securing our base and safety. After the attack, we carried on as usual. I went to craft the egg incubator and tried incubating the first egg, which turned out to be another fire type pal, Flambal. After the previous day's raid, I felt pretty paranoid about another potential attack. So, I got to work setting up some defenses. This involved farming up wood to craft defensive walls and securing the perimeter of my base with them. I also decided to build a few watchtowers to cover different angles of attack. Upon completing the defensive walls around the base, my only hope was that they would hold up when the next attack takes place. Speaking of different angles, I had to find an alternative approach to obtaining those darn wheat seeds. Luckily, there was indeed another way. I just needed to find a place that sold to these things. So off I went in search of a settlement with a trader. During the journey to acquire wheat seeds, I encountered a trader, and not just any ordinary trader, but a black marketeer. 
he sold some highly rated prohibited items. It wasn't something I was into, but I couldn't resist taking a little look-see. Moving on, I spotted a group of thugs who had trapped one of the wild pals in a cage. And folks, I just couldn't allow that. They needed a swift hand of justice from the camster, and that's exactly what we gave them. At the same time, we rescued the penguin from its cage only to trap it in my pal box back at the base. Yeah. I felt much better. Later that day, we stumbled upon a group of burly mercs fighting against thugs and for some reason, I felt that a settlement was nearby. I mean, why would these guys be out in the middle of nowhere for nothing, right? I then checked out the surrounding areas and lo and behold, the freaking settlement was not that far away. To my surprise, the first merchant I visited had exactly what was required. Freaking wheat seeds! At last. Oh man, just when I thought things were good at the base, a freaking Relaxaurus storm hits. They were way too overpowered for me and my pals, resulting in a total wipeout of my freaking base as well as a few casualties. At that moment, I honestly didn't want to do anything. It was just chaos. In the end, something had to be done about the mess. We had to regroup and fix up the place. I set up a few storage boxes to fill them up with all the resources lying on the floor. Then I went ahead with securing what was left of the base with more defensive walls. Continuing with the base repairs, I decided to build another base, but this time in a different spot. I thought it would be a good idea to place the base farthest from the raid attacks. I also crafted all the crafting stations that had been destroyed by those darn freaking Relaxaurus. That was pretty much it, getting back everything that we lost. On day 22, I spent my time catching as many pals as I could in the efforts to level up. I was also aiming for the 10 catch bonus, which you get by capturing 10 specific pals. This time, penglets were on my radar, along with a few other pals that happened to be in the area. By day 23, I had managed to unlock stone tier structures for my base. I figured that stone would be way more durable than wood. So, of course, I went ahead and upgraded my base from wood to stone tier tidying up a bit in the process. It was another day of leveling by catching more pals because I wanted to unlock the weapons workbench. We traveled a bit further than in previous ventures and ended up in an area with a lot more pals. It was exactly what I needed. Oh yeah, there was another pal in distress that I decided to assist, only to be trapped by me again. What a shame. The day began with me collecting some ores to prepare a few things. Back at the base, with the ores smelting into ingots, I proceeded to craft and place down the next requirement, the weapons workbench. This enabled me to upgrade my base to level 12 and unlocked the next set of requirements. However, I wasn't at the level to fulfill those tasks. To wrap things up, I decided to craft the monitoring stand. This little contraption allows me to change the work rate of my pals, but I wasn't going to do that to them. It was more for display purposes than anything else. Alrighty, I wanted a day of exploration, just to see what else was out there. Something really interesting caught my attention on the map. Another alpha pal. I just had to go and check it out. Upon my arrival, I noticed there was some type of teleporter that took me into a dungeon room with the Pen King himself. It was a decent level and well within my range. So I set loose Fox Parks to tackle the Alpha Pal head on, weakening the Pen King to the point where it struggled against the power of the Pal Sphere, eventually allowing me to capture it. I then spotted another Alpha Pal along the way, slightly above my ability to take on. Choosing not to mess with it, I decided to try to tame the nearby pals in the area. However, that too seemed to be a little out of my reach. Not paying attention to my HP cost me dearly and I collapsed under the pressure. Luckily, finding the place where the Cinemoth took me out wasn't that difficult and I was able to retrieve my gear. Later that day, I stumbled upon another camp, quite different from the others I'd encountered. At its center was a trapped creature and let's just say that pal looked freaking amazing. There was no questions about it. It was going to be mine. Unsure whether to target the humans or the creatures, I chose the sensible route, taking down all the NPCs in the area. However, as soon as they were out of the picture, the pals unexpectedly started attacking me, and I had to make a swift exit. Unfortunately, there were too many wild pals aggroed at my presence, and I had to leave the area without the cool-looking creature. 
The next day, I returned to the campsite, determined to try my luck once again at capturing the creature. Unfortunately, the one I really wanted wasn't there. In its place, however, was another cool pal. So, steadying my bow, I went into battle with the Free Pal Alliance. Luckily, we had some help from the Wild Pals in the area and managed to take down the Alliance, claiming my prize, a brand new pal, R Socks. With some daylight still at hand, we decided to stay in the area to capture some of the local wildlife. First, we bagged a Bristler, then a Floppy, and ended with Gale Claw. Done with messing around, it was time to take care of a few things at the base. Firstly, I added another furnace to speed up the smelting process. Then I went out to farm a ton of resources, including Paldium fragments, all that I could find, and of course, ore. We always need ore. While at it, our socks was put to the test, and boy, did he pass with flying colors. He simply just mowed down the Dinosaur. On day 29, we ventured once again to the moonless shore to catch a few pals and gain some levels to unlock new items. The area proved to be a bit challenging. Everything wanted to attack me, from the free alliance peeps to the wild pals. It was crazy. I pushed through though and found some lucky pals to catch, like another one of those cinemas, not forgetting the discovery of a giant sized dragon egg. However, what I really wanted to catch was that darn robin krill. Those pals were rather OP, making things really tricky to tackle. But I just had to try. Fortunately, I found one by itself. That's when I sent in Nightwing, and together we tried to weaken the Robin Krill. Eventually, we got his HP low enough to throw in the sphere, and well, I freaking bagged the bugger. It wasn't over just yet, as I went on to catch two more Robin Krills to add to my collection. Back at base, I went straight ahead to replace the incubator that had been previously wrecked by the Relaxaurus raid and set the huge dragon egg to incubate. However, there was a slight problem. The egg needed time to incubate. A whole lot of time. With that in mind, I decided to head out yet again to a different area, somewhere a bit easier to level up. Fortunately, I did find a place to my liking with loads of low-level pals for me to whack with my club and then capture them with my pal spheres. Yep, I continued leveling up throughout the day, trying to catch as many pals as I could possibly catch. Day 31 was another day dedicated to farming as many resources as I could, from Paldium to ores for those juicy ingots. And I also felt like messing with the Alpha Memorist. Yeah, I don't think that was a good idea. We almost got our butts handed to us. It's a good thing that we were able to escape. It was finally time to check up on the huge dragon egg. Taking it out of the incubator revealed a Relaxaurus joining the crew. Quite a shame though that it was only level 1. Anywho, what I wanted to do for the rest of the day was to gain a few more levels, which I planned to achieve by taking on some alpha pals. I decided to go after King Paco first. Jeez, was this battle something else? Not what I was expecting. There you go. Let's go and take on uh, King Pack here. You're not doing so well. Whoa! Sheesh! How's he doing? 700. Yo! We need an exit strategy here. Maybe. There we go. Man, King Pack is strong. Oh, nice! Yo, don't touch me with that. That looks dangerous, bro. Whew, that was close. Why are you targeting me? Oh, come on, guys. Whoa! That's crazy. Oh, man, so close. No, 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 no. Come on, get King Packer! Let's go! King Packer! Hey. Shaken after that fight, plans were changed concerning the Alpha Pals. Instead, we went over to one of those Syndicate campsites and raided the place, freeing the captured Pal from its cage as well. By the way, while strolling out and about that night, I spotted that freaky creature I wanted previously. Thinking that this was my chance, I sprang into action, lowered its HP, and threw in my pal sphere to capture the Van Worm. On day 33, my plan was to check out the ranch and Vixie combination. Supposedly, 
Vixie would provide me with tons of arrows and spheres, which would undoubtedly come in handy. The issue was that my base area was rather small, and I had to search for a suitable spot to place the ranch. Fortunately, I found some space at the back of my base and completed it with a few foundations and stairs. After it, I faced another challenge the need for more space to construct the Pearl Essence Condenser. However, I devised a clever plan to extend the foundations to the rear of my actual base. Although, truth be told, I wasn't entirely sure what to do with it at the time. I wrapped up the day by farming some of the ores required for my base, as well as experimenting with the King Packer ability, which supposedly increases my weight. I finally mustered up the courage to take on the next Alpha Pal, which I believe is called Azerobe. King Peppy? King Peppy? Wait, 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 wait. Yo. King Peppy? Yes. Slam dunk! Hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Come here. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Nearby I spotted another syndicate campsite, and of course I wanted to check it out. There were also new water type pals around the camp that I just had to catch. From there, I proceeded to raid the syndicates and freed the caged pals. Seeking more adventure, I was off to raid yet another syndicate campsite. This one proved to be a bit more challenging than the last. I didn't expect those thugs to be carrying those types of weapons. Fortunately, I had King Pappy with me, and his body slam just obliterated everything it touched. Together, we cleared the area, saving another one of those spells in the process. While in the area previously, I found a whole lot of relaxoruses and thought it would be a good idea to get one or two of them to join my crew. Unfortunately, this time around, none were to be found. However, there were a whole lot of new pals in the area. Instead of wasting this time, I decided to capture as many pals as I could and at the same time rack up those experience points. There was also this cool electric type pal, Univolt. Oh, you bet, I had to get that one and some of its cousins as well. Oh boy, I thought I'd give another alpha pal a try. Yeah, into the fungin. Oh, oh, it looks so beautiful. It does. It's a dragon? What's what's strong against dragon? A freak? I thought it was uh, something else. Why are you coming up to me? Oh yes, he got ice. There we go. I'll try my best to weaken it. Oh freak! Come on, go Nightwing. Do something to it. <laughs> uh, let me get King Pappy ready. All right, King Pappy. Go. Let's do this. Slam him. Oh, you. King Pappy. Do something. There we go. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. No. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Come. Ah, oh, freak. Oh no. I was almost going to freaking catch this thing. <sighs> oh, the pain! So, with all the arsocks that were caught previously, I was finally able to check out what that darn pal condenser could do. It basically makes your pal stronger by sacrificing the same type of pal. From there, it was back to the grind, farming up a whole bunch of paldium fragments and all the ores that were in the area. I also enhanced my pals with the power statue and used those pal souls that I had found over time. Pretty neat stuff if you ask me. Day 38 began with my pals and I defending our territory. After numerous upgrades to my base, its boundaries expanded, making it challenging for the raiders to attack. The only accessible route was at the back of the base, requiring the attackers to navigate through rock formations, a task NPCs couldn't manage to do. It turned out to be an unexpectedly clever design. Anyways, I headed off to the spot where the Relaxaurus usually spawned. Luckily, they were present this time around. I teamed up with my Nightwing to weaken and catch one using the Gigasphere. During our journey to the volcano, we stumbled upon a Syndicate camp. 
Curiosity got the better of me, but it turned out to be a bad idea. The thugs were overpowered, dealing a significant amount of damage to me and my pals. With no other option, I decided to bail and face another day. After it, we took a trip to the volcano to see what it was all about. Oh man, this place was insane. At my current level, I wouldn't have lasted long if I had stuck around. The wild pals were at a higher level, and at a certain point, it got way too hot for me. However, I still tried to catch one of the flambells that were around my level. As soon as I secured it, that was it for me. I was out of there. For day 39, I spent my time in the wilderness, leveling up by catching a whole bunch of relaxoruses and a few of the other pals that were in the area. So, finally, the timer for the Criven had refreshed, and I returned to the dungeon to attempt to catch it. I worked hand in hand with my pals, trying not to kill it as we weakened the Criven. After some great teamwork and a few tries with the pal spheres, I managed to catch the freaking Criven. But we weren't done just yet. There were a few more alphas on the list. Bushy was next. Unfortunately, my pals were way too eager to take it on, and we kinda sent it to the afterlife. With some time left over, I decided to give catchers a go. This too turned out to be one of those crazy fights, given that it was a dark type. We pressed on though, using different strategies, and yeah, I captured this one as well. Catchers was added to the collection. Okie dokes, I started prepping for the next item required for a base upgrade. You know what that means, right? Yeah, more farming of resources. Great stuff. Day 42 started with another attack from an angry mob of pals. I had no freaking idea what I did to make them this aggro, but it wasn't going to deter me from what had to be done. Fortunately, King Pappy was around and they stood no chance. Well, there were more pressing issues back at base like finding a place for the oversized assembly line. Luckily, there was an easy solution. All that had to be done was to extend my base upwards to add a second floor. A couple of ceilings and walls sorted us out, and the assembly production line was underway. So, in order to get the assembly line machine to work, I needed electricity. To obtain electricity, I had to take out some electric pals to get their organs and craft the power generator. That's exactly what I did for day 43, hunted down univolts for their electric organs. Having prepped all the items needed, I went ahead to craft and place down the power generator. After it, I needed to assign one of my univolts to power up the generator, enabling me to use the assembly line to craft a few stronger spheres, specifically the hypersphere. From there, I proceeded to upgrade my base followed by an evening of farming up some of the resources I required. My plan was to start working on an automated ore farm, but to do that, I had to catch a few pals. The dig toys was on my radar, but they were in a very hostile environment. I was literally on fire as soon as I set foot in that place. However, there was a way to catch them. I had to wait at the border of their location and snipe them to get their attention. That's how I managed to tame my first dig toys. Sadly, they weren't any more around. Next, I sped off to an area where I thought it would be a good idea to set up a second base, as this area had loads of ore nodes all around. First, the pal box was crafted to claim the space and transfer my pals. Lastly, for protection, I opted to place a ring of wooden defensive walls around the perimeter of the base. The next day, I went ahead to craft all the amenities that my pals required to work and stay happy. I crafted some beds for them to sleep, a few berry plantations for their food, and also a feed box for them to eat. For a chill session, I added in a sweet hot spring for them to enjoy, which I later added a second hot spring into the mix. The agenda for the day was to return to the Twilight Dunes in search of more dig choices to add to my automated ore farm. While scouring the area for these creatures, I stumbled upon one of the legendary pals called Anubis. It looked absolutely insane. Being a level 47, I wasn't even thinking about messing around with it. Afterward, I encountered a few new creatures in the area, specifically Dumods, and well, I couldn't resist attempting to add them to my collection. Unfortunately, it didn't go so well. My weapons were just a bit too OP for them. Eventually, as I continued exploring this part of the world, dig choices started to appear. Wasting no time at all, I cleared the area of all the unwanted thugs and focused my attention on capturing those dig choices. I managed to capture both of the pals that were in sight before moving on to capture more that were scattered around the Twilight Dunes. By the end of the day, 
I had successfully caught about three dig toises and a few other pals as well, including the darn Dumat. Here's the thing, my plan was to rearrange the base a bit by upgrading the defensive walls to stone tier. I was a bit hesitant to tear down my defensive walls, but I bit the bullet and just went for it. Oh boy, just as I destroyed my defensive walls, a freaking raid began. It was like, you gotta be kidding me. Fortunately, these pals used the same route to attack my base, diminishing the amount of damage they could do. Although, somehow, a few attackers managed to find their way over the rocks and had access to my base. In a blink of an eye, I scrambled to find a solution to stop those punks from progressing. That's when I went ahead and placed down several defensive walls to block their attacks. With that quick action, I managed to save the base and all of my pals. After the attack, I began working on reorganizing the base and added some stone structures. By day 49, I continued working on the base, adding a layer of stone defensive walls and erecting more watchtowers. Things were looking really tight and I was pretty sure that my base would not be raided anytime soon. It was day 50! A good time to check on how my base would stand against an attack. Right on time, another raid unfolded. Things went on as usual. The raiders attacked from the same position and a few of them managed to jump over and get close to my defensive walls. But there wasn't anything too hectic going on that we couldn't handle. On a positive note, I caught one of the raiders with my pal Sphere. It was certainly the cherry on top. Next, I fast traveled to the second base to see how things were going. And clearly, something wasn't right. I mean, they were collecting stuff, but it seemed they should have been doing way more. Maybe they needed more time or something. Anyways, considering that the mining base wasn't really working out, I decided to go out and farm the resources required by myself. Honestly, I think I did a better job with just the pickaxe. After finishing my tasks at the base, I decided to take on another alpha pal, and this one was named Petalia. And we shall attack you, buddy! Oof! Let's go! We Shazer, you got me! You coming to get me? Chillax, buddy! Holy smokes! How's this thing? Go! Ah, oh, socks! The man! Spirit fire! There we go! 63. I think we should uh, try and catch this thing now. Wait! Hold up! Battalia! Yes! There we go, beautiful flowers. Ooh, I saw that somewhere. Following that intense battle, we chilled around the area, capturing all the pals I could find to gain more experience to level up. During this process, we encountered a new type of creature, a gory rat. And of course, I had to catch that as well. The leveling continued the next day, and I found myself in the middle of Verdant Brook facing off against Gumpfins. These crafty little creatures proved surprisingly strong. I never expected them to pose such a challenge. They nearly wiped me out, managing to even take down the mighty King Pappy. It felt almost impossible, but I knew I had to leave the area. Not without capturing one of those Gumpfins though. Just to say I've been there and done that kind of thing, you know. But the show had to go on. We still had a lot of levels to rack up. Pressing on, we captured more new pals, like the Mosander. Before moving on to another volcano on the map, that's where I spotted a legendary pal named Jormantide. The urge to catch the legendary pal was strong, but I knew at my current level, it was unlikely to happen. Anyways, carrying on with my exploration quest, I found a whole bunch of new fire pals at the volcano and went ahead to capture a few of them to add to my collection. On day 53, I decided to prepare for the upcoming boss fight. Knowing that the next boss was going to be a grass type pal, I chose to have the strategic advantage of having powerful fire pals. I returned to the volcano island to scout for more high level recruits. Encountering more van worms, my initial attempt proved challenging. 
but with the second one, I exercised greater caution and successfully added it to my team. Eager for more fiery allies, I sought out a nearby Wixen, initiating a battle that unfolded into a fiery inferno. Yep, we did come out on top of that one and added yet another pal to my collection. Armed with a fire suit, I continued exploring the island, encountering amazing pals along the way, notably a Feng Lope that tempted me for a short while, but I ultimately decided to leave it be. However, my attention was drawn to an intriguing pal called Reptaro. Recognizing its potential, I readied my musket and carefully weakened it. Within minutes, I successfully caught both the Reptaro and the nearby Wixen with my pal spheres expanding my collection of pals. Back at base, I started crafting a Van Worm saddle. During the crafting process, my base faced a sudden attack by a group of thugs. As mentioned earlier, the base was well fortified, with attackers having only one path over some rocks to reach us. I felt pretty secure, and to make the win that much sweeter, I captured one of the thugs as a trophy. Later that day, I visited my second base to check on how things were going. Unfortunately, I discovered that most of the defensive walls were missing, and there was a significant lack of ore collection, which was the reason that I built a base there in the first place. Feeling a bit frustrated, I returned to my main base and engaged in some farming activities of my own. Well, considering I had a long wait before the ore could be smelted, I decided to zip off to my second base to address a few issues. Upon arriving, I gathered the wood that my pals had collected and replaced the missing defensive walls. As luck would have it, while I was busy fixing up the place, we got attacked by the Free Pal Alliance. Fortunately, I had the foresight to station a few strong pals to guard the base against potential raiders. They handled the attack effortlessly, taking care of the raiders without breaking a sweat, and none of my pals or structures suffered significant damage. It was after the small settlement on day 56, as I wanted to sell a few of my items and see if the merchant had anything good for me. I received a good price for all of my items, but unfortunately, the merchant didn't have anything worthwhile for me, so I left the settlement empty-handed. With plenty of time on hand, I decided to go out exploring and at the same time pick up a few levels by catching different pals that were nearby. I also went after another alpha pal, a fire type known as Bushy. It was a decent fight, but we got the better of him and captured an awesome looking swordsman. The task of leveling spilled over to the next day as I caught more pals in a different area for the XP bonuses. I also managed to encounter a new pal, a really cool grass type, Elizabeth. On day 58, I spent my time doing a few things at the base. Firstly, I upgraded one of my hot springs to a high quality hot spring for my pals. Then I went ahead and crafted the production assembly line too, with the help of my buddy or pals, achieving a base upgrade to level 15. And as you guessed, I went out farming for more ores, but at the other base since they had a lot more nodes close to each other. Alrighty, feeling a sense of adventure, I decided to check out the snow biome. To say the least, pals were hard to come by and the ones that showed up were really high levels. They were actually over the 40 level mark, way beyond my ability to capture. However, I did find a large frozen egg and went ahead to tame a mile crest, as I didn't want to leave empty handed. Besides, this spell was the lowest level that I could find. Bright and early on day 60, another raid was initiated on my base. This time, a new group of attackers called fangirls took a shot at us. Certainly not the type I wanted following me around, but hey, we dealt with those punks protecting our base once again. After the attack, I hopped over to the other base to farm up some ore, then returned to my main base to prep up a few items, mainly the nails that were required, and got myself a golden crossbow, as well as the production assembly line. On day 61, the ice egg was finally ready. Taking it out of the incubator reveals that a nice Reptaro was added to my crew. I then focused on prepping for the next boss battle by upgrading my shield to a Giga Shield and attempting to craft the Golden Crossbow. Jeez, that thing took forever to get done, but eventually, after what felt like hours, we finally made the darn crossbow and we were ready for the next boss fight. Alrighty peeps, I, I don't know how this is going to go, but uh, it's time to face the next boss. Supposedly Lily, I think. I'm so scared. It is Lily. What you got for us? Please, 
Please, please, please, let me just take you out. Yeah, there we go. And the battle freaking begins. Oh, mate. Okay. It's game time, Lily. There we go. Have that for breakfast. 69k on this thing. Way, yeah, 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 mamma mia. This is hardly taking damage. Great job, Flame Bell. Oh my god. I needed to load. Flame Bell. You did well. I'm just gonna keep running around then. Because, uh, quite frankly, she's not interested in my R socks. Oh my freaking self. Have flame! For breakfast! I mean, for lunch! <laughs> You're there at breakfast. Come on, Flame. Do the job, man. The freak's wrong with you, man! Come on! We got this. 19k. Three minutes. There we go. 8k. 8k. Three minutes. Come on! We got this. We got this. Oh, 7k. Oh, man. Oh, one more. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do it. Yes! There we go! Boss eliminated! Yo! That's stressing there, man. Really stressing. For the next few days, I dedicated my time to exploring most of the map in search of pals to catch, aiming to level up as quickly as possible. My objective was to catch 10 of each pal type to unlock the 10 catch bonus, or at least that's what I tried to do. As I ventured out, I decided to take on a side quest by flying towards the Pal Sanctuary. This sanctuary housed some of the rarest spells in Pal World, and my specific target was the Mighty Grisbals. The sheer variety of unique Pals in the sanctuary overwhelmed me at first. It was evident that some of these spells were destined to join my collection. The potential was too great to ignore. Despite the distractions, I remained focused on the goal of finding the elusive Grisbalt. But as the day wore on, my patience began to wear thin. Just when I was on the brink of giving up, a Grisbalt finally appeared. Oh my freaking soul, there it is. There it is. The man himself, Grisbalt. Ah, oh, there we go. No freaking way. We got it, man. We got it. We freaking got him. Continuing my journey, I scoured the map for more pals, determined to gain the levels I needed. At the same time, I engaged in a battle against a nearby alpha pal. Why not? Why freaking not? Yeah. Oh. We're not doing that much damage to this thing. We're using the wrong uh, crossbow. That's why we're not seeing that. Oh. 77. Oh. My. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're hungry. I cannot feed you at the moment. We're fighting this thing. Never mind. After making a quick pit stop at base to repair my gear and restock on spheres and arrows, we hit the road again with the goal of leveling up as much as possible over the next two days. The challenge was not only to level my character, but also to ensure my pals gain experience as well. Different activities were required to gain experience for both me and my pals, making the process a bit crazy but necessary. Oh yeah, during my leveling session, I unexpectedly encountered another alpha pal, Beacon. Um, ground type is what we need to fight electric. So we'll just have to try and get this dude with the... Holy! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! There we go. Nightmare ball. Oh. No, mate. 100. Come on, puppy. Oh, there we go. Please, please. Oh, there we go. That's the shot there, buddy. Oh, come on. I only got one more left. Bro, skis. 
Uh, come on. Are we not meant to catch you? Oh, please, man. Please. Oh, please, man. Yes! On day 68, I reached the level to unlock the next station necessary for upgrading my base, the improved furnace. Realizing the need for coal to begin crafting refined ingots, I teamed up with Van Worm and soared off to the Twilight Dunes, the only place I could think of with a coal source. Given I was in need of experience points and the abundance of pals in the area, it was a no-brainer. I couldn't resist. I had to catch me some pals, peeps. Back at space, I took the initiative to rectify the error that had occurred. It turned out that the wrong assembly station had been crafted, so I needed to sort that out. Anyhow, more resources were still needed. As a result, we set off once again to the Twilight Dunes to gather more coal. After which, we headed to my second base to harvest all the ore nodes in the area. Okay, so the next task on my list was to find pure quartz. I remembered spotting some during my previous expedition to the snow biome. With Van Worm by my side, we took flight and headed towards the snowy region in search of quartz. As luck would have it, I stumbled upon a mother load of quartz deposits. However, the area was infested with hostile thugs that needed to be dealt with. No problem, we cleverly led them over the ledge, leaving me with exclusive access to this diamond mine. I proceeded to place down my third pal box for fast travel and began harvesting as much quartz as I could. Unfortunately, attempting the same strategy for coal farming proved unsuccessful because we were limited to only three bases. It was a shame, but I would have to make do with the resources at my disposal. Alright, the quest for gaining levels continued over the next few days. I returned to the snow region to try to catch a few ice spells. It was a challenge for sure, because Van Worm and I cut ourselves in a bit of a pickle when a bunch of Raindrake spells showed up. It was definitely one heck of an experience, but we somehow managed to get a few of them. Next, I thought about going into dungeons to find some pals that weren't normally around during the day, hoping they would help boost my experience with the bonus points. Additionally, I aimed to get a few extra points by taking down the dungeon boss. There was also the Relaxaurus Lux that I decided to pop in for a visit to say hi. Unlucky for this Thunder God, it had no idea that it was about to be enslaved by the awesome Camster. I had another idea in mind, which was to take on the first boss. The thing is, my pals and I were way too strong for this opponent. When we defeated this foe, we barely got any experience from it. Not what I was hoping for. So, it was back to catching more pals in the wild, and a few smacks with the club were all that was needed to get the job done. Taking a break from the leveling grind, I decided to chill at the base and work on a few things. We prepared some items such as the high quality cloth and nails to craft the next base requirements, which were two large pal beds. With that task completed, the base level was bumped up to 17. Since I could craft the next required item, I went ahead and leveled up my base once again. Finding myself low on ingots, I swiftly upgraded my pick to a refined metal pickaxe. Meanwhile, I had to defend my base against another raid, but these punks had nowhere to go, so it was easily taken care of. After the attack, I traveled to the second base where I went here to farm ore for the rest of the day. On day 75, I noticed something really odd. Some of the stone walls were damaged, and I knew for sure none of the attackers did that much damage to my base. I thought it was a bunch of crap, to be honest. Anyhow, I had to quickly put up some walls because we were in the middle of a raid. Luckily, nothing too crazy happened. However, since I was working on the base and considering it was a little cramped, I decided to rearrange some structures to tidy up and hopefully create more space for the base. For the rest of the day and into day 76, I continued with improvements to my base. And I must say, it looked so much better now that everything had a proper place. Once all that was done, well, yeah, I went to gain more levels, smacking some low-level pals and capturing them. I still had a lot of 10 catch bonuses to complete. Continuing the effort of leveling on day 77, I took on a new alpha pal, Mosander Lux. I wanted to catch it, but it seemed that Grisbolt didn't like the idea. We also went to the smaller volcano island to complete a few of the 10 catch bonuses that I had missed out on during the previous visit. Okay, tactics had to change a little for the next few days of leveling. Since I had caught most of the pals on the island for their bonuses, 
I decided to farm all the resources needed during the day, from ore to quartz and everything in between. Then, during the night, I used this time to level up by catching the pals that only appeared at night. Of course, these were the dark type pals. By now, leveling was the aim of the game. I pressed done, leveling up some more for the next few days, trying to find pals for which I hadn't yet gotten the 10 catch XP bonus. I also took on a few alpha pals, like the Memorist. Finally, I gathered the courage to face it head on and eventually defeated the beast. I also encountered less intimidating alphas like Petalia and the dragon type pal, Alfredren, or something like that. On day 81, I found myself at the base, taking care of a few things. I needed to craft the production assembly line too, but realized I didn't have the place for it. The solution was clear. I had to build a third floor. A few ceilings and walls sorted things out in a jiffy, and I was able to craft the production station. Once completed, I upgraded my shield to a hyper shield, giving me loads more protection. As you may have guessed, I went out to level up some more. I went after a brown cherry aqua with my grizzbolt, thinking that I was able to catch it, only to find out that I couldn't. Anyways, I carried on with the grind, catching more dark pals, or at least that's what I thought. I mean, just look at the trail that was left behind. I soon figured out that my pal box was full. Thing is, I just couldn't be bothered about it. All that was needed were those darn levels. And I needed more freaking levels. Oh yeah, would you believe it? I needed more freaking levels. And I had to catch more pals for the bonuses they gave. On a side note, I'm not sure when I made the change, but somewhere towards the end, I adjusted the XP gain from 1.3 to 2 and then to 3 to see which provided a better gaming experience. To me, 3 times seemed to be the sweet spot, considering the amount of leveling I was doing. It was starting to feel like a drag, not something that interested me to be honest. And I also made the days longer, just to get all the XP that I could. It was back to the grind of gathering resources to stock up. I farmed everything required, from ore at my second base to coal in the twilight dunes, and then off to the snowy regions to gather pure quartz. At my main base, I teamed up with Robin Quill to cook up a whole bunch of arrows. And of course, not forgetting to squeeze in some time to level up. We were really close to the 100th day, and I had to be more than prepared for the bosses that followed. So, on day 84, I had the items ready to craft an electric furnace, which maxed out my base level at 20. Topping things off, I added the sphere assembly line too, enabling me to craft the legendary sphere. For the rest of the day and night, I worked on gaining more experience points to gain the levels I required. Continuing my efforts to gain as many levels as possible on day 85, we went on to challenge Lily and Leilin multiple times to earn loads of experience points for my pals. Alrighty beefs, it's time to take on the next boss battle! Yo! What's up, buddy? Alrighty. Who do we have here? Holy smokes. Yeah, I'm so scared already, man. Yay! Axel! Oh my goodness. Alright, alright, alright. I gotta use my... There you go. Quickly there. Oh, oops. That was the wrong button. Alrighty. We got this. Let's put Foxy Cole. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Hold up. Hold up, buddy. It's a lot easy to maneuver with my controller for this boss fight. Oh. Oh, thank you, Foxy Cole. You saved me. Yo. Oh, you got me there, son. You got me there. There's one for the show. Foxicle's doing it, buddy. Oh, no. Foxicle's down, son. Nope, buddy. Not this time. Come on. Woo-wee. Deer's yeah. not doing so good. Have to change him out here. Come on, Robin Quill, Terra. Oh, it probably calls not doing so good. 60k. Yo, uh, bro. Come 
Come on, buddy. We got flame in action here. Gotta stay behind these pillars. He's the only thing that can help me here. Oh, <laughs> you got me, son. Woo 18k, bro. 18 freaking k two minutes. Oh, three. I just saw two in the front there. Ah, uh, no, 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 not like this. It's not ending like this, man. Yo, 8k. Oh, we can do this. We can do this. My shield's back up. We can do this. Let's go. It's clobbering time, buddy. Oh, there we go. Almost done. Almost done. I'll let you finish that. Yay. Let's go. Level up, son. Level up 100k. I'm going to be using this boss. <gasps> Woo! We couldn't chill after that fight. Oh no, I swapped out some of my pals for the ones that were needed. And well, we had to get ready for the last two sets of boss fights and to catch a few legendary pals as well. So yeah, I had to level these puppies. We went on to level some more on day 87, catching pals I hadn't seen around the map except for when these punks tried to raid my base. And then continued leveling on day 88. I wasn't done yet with the leveling part, so please do expect more. Yeah, and sorry in advance, it's just something that had to be done. Well, on day 89, while we were out and about, I decided to take a chance and capture the mighty Jormantide. From the moment I saw this bad boy, I knew that I just had to have him. To say the least, this battle was quite tough and lengthy. However, my pals held up against this mighty foe. The thing is though, we needed to work on the finesse side of things, as we completely destroyed Jormantide. It was quite a shame, but the levels gained more than made up for it. That was it then. We went on to face tougher alpha pals like Suzaku and then took on Lily and Leilin a couple more times. Yep, on day 90, it was yet another day spent farming levels, going after the pals that I had completely missed out on for the 10 catch bonus. Managing to craft the Relaxora saddle with a missile launcher, I decided to test it out on Jormantide as we returned to capture it this time. As before, the battle was tough and longer than it seemed. However, this time, I took it upon myself to tangle with Jormantide for the last few minutes, trying to lower its HP as I attempted to catch it. This went on for several minutes as this beast refused to give in. After a million tries, Jormantide finally gave in. And I freaking bagged this monstrous beauty. And you probably should have guessed by now. And if you did, well, you were right. We went on to farm more levels, fighting Lily and Leilene for the next day and a half. Alright, peeps. It's time to take on the next boss. It's going to be crazy. Like this crazy dude. Looks like the Green Goblin. Well, let's see how tough he is. Shall we? Ah, uh, let's go! It's clobbering time! Yo! Alright, enough fun there. There we go. Go with the water version. Yes! Relaxosaurus. Relaxosaurus. There we go. German tires ready to attack, buddy. We got this. Oh, nice shot, buddy. Nice one. Run! Is plotting something? Things are getting intense now. Freak! Two minutes and 40k to do. Oh, my soul. Come on, come on, come on. One minute. 29k. Oh, freak. We got two minutes. <laughs> help me out here, buddy. I'm trying to help you as much as possible, buddy. But uh, this dude is, isn't giving me a shot. Just keeps on freaking following me. And I'm gonna run for my life. 
is gonna plaster me with something. <laughs> 15k! Oh my gosh! 13k! In few freaking... Oh. Come on, come on, push. Final push, buddy. Final freaking push. Oh, if this thing would freaking reload. Oh, come on, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Oh, come on. Yes! Oh, no freaking way. Let's go. Oh, that was just crazy. Crazy. Freaking crazy. Freaking stuff. On day 94, I set off to farm resources to craft the rocket launcher. I grabbed some wool from my second base, then moved to the twilight dunes to collect sulfur and oil. While doing my thing at the dunes, I decided to dismantle the third base and place it near the coal deposits to make it easy for me to farm the resources required. Afterward, I zipped over to the merchants in the desert region to buy high quality pearl oil and to sell some of the items to cash in on gold. I then traded the gold for more rifle ammo. And so my friends, it was time to go after one of the alpha pals that I wanted to catch. Frost Stallion. Mm -hmm. Then we can capture it. Here it is. Frost Stallion. Uh, let's just see how much damage this does. 107. I mean, 177. Oh, that's not great. Yikes! Taking a whole lot of damage here. Yes, bro. That's crazy. He knocks out my uh, little fella here. Crazy! Um, nope, buddy. Next time. German tide is almost gone. Is it like 9k? We got 9k. It's crazy, man. Come on, say still. Man. I completely missed. I am not trusting these rockets again. Come on. -wee. I saved you, buddy. I saved you. Just remember that. And I saved you there, too. <laughs> hey. Let's go. Oof, never mind, that wasn't so good, eh? 11. <laughs> oh, my freaking soul. 11. This uh, rocket thing is a freaking waste of time, man. This, I'm just saying. Let's go with some rockets. <laughs> what are they doing? Oh, 73. That's not too bad. 80 or something. Oh, and we sing you flop like a pancake. Yeah. I have nothing left. I have nothing left. Oh, you gotta be. Sh sh <laughs> <laughs> no freaking way. How do we miss that? Oof. Two more. Two more good shots, man. That's all we have. Gotta be careful. Can do just a little bit more damage to it. Four. <laughs> Four is that good, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's freaking go. Oh. For days 96 to 97, I went about collecting war resources to gear up for the upcoming challenges. Then, going off my head, Eager to gain more levels and pals, I took on Anubis at the Twilight Dunes and successfully caught it. After that, I headed to the desert to face Sazako again. And of course, not forgetting the usual battle with Lillian Leilin. Oh boy, the time had come for me to tackle the most ferocious pal, Jetragon. Hopefully I'm saying it right. But we need this guy for the final boss fight, so... Um... It's time to boogie! We got uh, Frostel here. Okay, buddy, I need your help to take down this big Oompa Galoof. The freak, bro. 
Knocked him out. Got to be really careful because this thing is super OP. Don't want to be messing around with this guy. There you go. Go to sleep. Yes, it's doing crazy damage to Frostalion. I thought it would be a difference. Crazy, I tell you. 7k only. It's not good. Not good at all. Rico, you're not coming after me, please. No, 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 no. That's not good. Need to take a chili. Chill it. Let's get a bit chili here. Let's get in a bit chili. What's going on? Why am I picking up stuff? The freak's wrong with you. No, 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 no. Buy me some time, please. Buy me some time. Buy me some time. I need to dodge everything. It's like a freaking obstacle course here. Go to sleep. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. We got this. Oh. Oh. 2k. 2k. Let's bring him down to just over a couple of hundreds. We'll try and catch him. What you got? 1-5. Good try. Maybe. You still got me. How the freak did you get me? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Here we go. Here we freaking go. Here we go. Last minute preps were underway. I went back to the desert merchant to buy more high quality pearl oil and some ammo. Back at base, I proceeded to prepare Jetragun's saddle and also cooked up some rockets for the final boss fight in early access. This is it, peeps. All those days grinding away for this final battle. We have Jetragun to take us there. Ready, peeps. We made it. And it's time. It's just time. To enter the final boss battle. Let us go. Mate, are you ready for this? Well, I sure hope we are. We prepared long and hard for this. Huh. And this dude comes blind. I mean, blindfolded. Uh. Seriously? All right. Victor and Shadow Bank, feel the wrath of my Jet Dragon, Jet Dragon. Ooh, ooh. Are you starting already, mate? No wasting time here. I see how it is. Don't worry. We'll try to do the same. Come on, buddy. Come on. How you doing, buddy? You're holding up. I see ya. Got it down to uh, 180, I guess. Oh, freak! I hate those things, man. I hate those things. Those plasma attacks. Every boss seems to have it. There we go. Oof. Almost 3k for that. Oh, you have two of these! No freaking way, man. No freaking way. How are we supposed to do stuff here? Yo! Bus is crazy. Crazy, I say. We got ya. Alright, buddy. Time to uh, tap you. I mean, tag you out. Tag you out. Perfect, mate. Perfect. I just hold him up so I can uh, get my uh, armor back up or shield. Oof. Yes, 140. In. Uh, Three minutes. Down 60k. I don't know. It might be slower now because uh, we got Frostel in here, but I need to buy some time for my other pal. This is gonna be my downfall. The reload times. I think we need Jetrukan back because it seems to be doing uh, a better amount of damage to this thing. We need to work faster. It's under, almost under five minutes here and we didn't get halfway yet. 
But that's not good enough. We need to work faster. Are you coming for a uh, little... Uh, oh, freak. <laughs> I got shadow blasted. Can't see much. Why didn't you reload? Why didn't you freaking reload? That's not how it goes here. We do the damage, not you. Okay, so 60, 70k. Ah, oh, you son of a beautiful woman. One minute. One minute and 30k. I don't know if we can do this. I mean, it looks good, but uh, I don't know, man. Oh, I just wasted that. I thought I could uh, sneak attack here. Freaking reload, man. <laughs> you kill it, hey. 50k in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, come on. 11. Oh, 10. 10 freaking k. Oh, oh, oh. We gotta, we gotta do this. Push, 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 buddy. 20 seconds. Uh oh, oh. Come on. You only got 7k left. 19 seconds. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Do, do, do something. Do something. 5k. Oh, mate. Come on. Do something. Come on, 4 seconds. Oh. Yes! Come on. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Just 3 seconds left. Oh, my freaking soul. That was crazy. Crazy, yo!